Anti-Estrogens in Bodybuilding Part 2, Anastrozole. This is going to be bro science at its absolute best, as this agent has been used for decades for men that are bodybuilding and in the culture of use of anabolic steroids that are estrogenic steroids, testosterone esters, and agents like Dynabol and Anadrol. It's been used for many years. In addition, it's also used off-label medically at anti-aging clinics, which we'll discuss today. The concept is that these powerful agents will control the androgen to estrogen ratio, as they do. And it limits the effect of super physiologic estradiol in, as we see, water gain and puffiness, gynecomastia is classic, and overall wellness that are men using this drug and trying to stay balanced with libido, emotional liability, and classically weepiness. The history of anastrozole, developed by Zeneca Pharmaceuticals in 1995. It was adjunctive treatment initially for hormone receptor positive advanced breast cancer. And then soon after, there was a head-to-head -head trial that it showed that it beat out as a first-line therapy tamoxifen for this type of breast cancer. The mechanism of action of anastrozole. It's a selective non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor where systemically this medicine blocks the enzyme aromatase from its conversion of androgens into estrogens. It's very straightforward. The medical uses of this agent. It's an anti-estrogen for chemotherapy for locally advanced or metastatic breast cancer that is hormone receptor positive. Also, adjunctive therapy for early breast cancer. Now, it's interesting that 99% of breast cancer are seen in women, 1% are seen in men. I don't think a lot of people understand that, that it is seen in men, breast cancer, but it's about 1%. Now, off-label uses of this strong medicine. We've seen in the last two decades, there has been limited case studies and even some trials showing that men that have low testosterone, in addition, they had higher estrogen levels, and we do see that in men organically that are getting older and have certain metabolic medical conditions. And they use this drug to block the effect of the, aromatiz the aromatized estrogen and in theory, liberate the man's free testosterone which it does seem to do. Now, I could tell you that I've tried it. I've used this for men in this scenario. These are not anabolic steroid using men. These are men that have low T organically. And it does work on paper. But I could tell you that it's not sustainable, unfortunately. It's not sustainable. And again, this is a powerful medicine. So that's some of the history anecdotally that I found. Now, off-label use currently today is at anti-aging rejuvenation clinics in America and abroad. They will use this, unfortunately, as a cookie-cutting approach. They'll give men testosterone and they'll give men this strong drug or other types of anti-estrogens, possibly other serums like Clomid, Tamoxifen, and even human chorionic gonadotropin. And these are medicines that certainly can be used, but it's done in a cookie-cut way and it's not monitored in my opinion well. They'll use it again as men in the bodybuilding community use it for estrogenic conversion from steroids, from testosterone esters, to limit water gain, gynecomastia, and overall wellness. At this point in the discussion, let's talk about side effects because this is the most crucial aspect of this presentation. Now, this is a medicine that's very powerful, and we're going to discuss the uses in men that are using it in their recreational or professional bodybuilding.
cultural centers, and just men that are using steroids personally. And again, these are estrogenic steroids, mainly estrogen of testosterone. And again, also being used chronically at anti-aging facilities. The issues with this drug are complicated and they're not proven. There's no studies, there's no prospective, randomized, double-blinded studies. This is all clear bro science and it's all anecdotal, although there is a lot of data here. And I could tell you that this drug can be used carefully and the side effects are going to be dose dependent, time dependent, and man dependent and how it's used. The number one side effect goes right to the heart. You're going to see that this medicine will have significant and deteriorating effects on the high density lipoprotein, the HDL, which is the protective good HDL for a man for his heart. It's interesting that we see this medicine, even in small doses, take a inherent baseline HDL downward. Now, it's interesting that why and who are we using this with? Men on testosterone and or steroids. I want to point out there's some synergy here. Men are on testosterone and I can tell you that every man, so close to 100%, when he goes on even TRT doses, his HDL will go down at least a little bit, sometimes a lot, depending on what other drugs and who he is that he's using. But when you add testosterone replacement and or steroids to this drug, anastrozole, you get significant declining values in HDL. I've seen numbers of HDL unmeasurable. I've seen men in the single digits and commonly I see men coming in using this medicine from themselves or anti-aging clinics when their HDLs are in the 20s or certainly in the 30s sometimes even lower. And they'll tell me that they've had these numbers for many years in some circumstances. And unfortunately, although it's very rare, I've seen several men under the age of 40 have myocardial infarction because he has bad history, family history of coronary disease using these agents and his HDL will be very low. And this whole conundrum or this whole physiological milieu has led him into having a blockage in his heart. And I've seen this man diagnosed with myocardial infarction, status post stenting, and bypass surgery. I have, um, unfortunately, a number of men that I care for right now that are in this regard. So, you have to be very careful. It is interesting. What's the mechanism of this, Doc? How does this medicine lower the HDL inherently. Well, it's mediating through the liver somehow, and it's not toxic to the liver, but it's mediating through the liver because this is where the lipoproteins are generated. And it's interesting that a man will have a perfectly good estradiol number or even a super physiological or high number, but his HDL goes down. So obviously this is affecting this aspect of producing the HDL directly itself in some mechanism. We have no idea how. Side effects continued. Definitely it's going to have an effect on the mood and the well-being and the CNS of a man despite having balanced estrogen levels. I've seen this. I've seen this for years. I deal with it all the time. Men will have malaise and fatigue. They will have depression. And if a man has depression underlying, this is such a strong medicine for him. Even though, Doc, it's balanced and they're checking the levels, or I'm checking the levels, and their estradiol levels or total estrogen is completely normal, even in some circumstances elevated. Of course, they're on some testosterone. We don't know how it mediates. There must be direct effects on the central nervous system, especially for a man that has underlying depression. Please be careful. Libido, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fine balance on libido. Men will use this drug, of course, because they want to stay balanced. We always all want to stay balanced. You're on androgens, you want to balance the, the estrogens. It's a perfect concept. But in the beginning, it could work well. And then over time, it's not sustainable. Again, despite looking at the numbers on paper, we call this treating the paper. It doesn't sustain for all men, but some men it does. 
They have to be watched carefully. And then, of course, sometimes you see hot flashes even, because that's usually when you see men that are abolished with the estrogen. And it's such a strong medicine that if you're taking too much of this, even a little bit too much, in the beginning it may work when you have a big overload of estrogen, then quickly it will go down. And if you stay on that same dose without being monitored, you can have side effects of hot flashes. And again, these are central nervous system effects. Next, musculoskeletal. Now, we know from women that use this because they have breast cancer and they have to use it, they can have pronounced declining density of the bones. It's called osteopenia and osteoporosis. I've seen it as I was a primary care doctor for many women for over a decade. So in men, we don't know. We don't know how it's going to affect the bones. And I don't think it's going to call, cause osteoporosis in men, but we just have no studies on this because the men still have levels of estrogen that we can measure to be balanced. Now, in addition, these men have androgen, which we know is very pronounced protector of bone density. Very interesting. But the interesting piece here is the musculoskeletal aspect is tendon injury, ligament injury. How many power lifters have achy joints and lifters and just regular guys that are on this medicine and they're trying to balance it and they have achy joints? And this is incredible to me. Again, despite looking at the number on paper and being balanced. Last aspect of side effects is miscellaneous. So there's all sorts of miscellaneous side effects beyond the basic heart and the mood and the musculoskeletal side effects that are obvious. GI effects, hair loss. Well, you're on testosterone. Are you losing your hair? Because you're on testosterone. Um, nail fungus and other skin effects. Very interesting dermatologic effects I've seen over many, many years. Now, rationale for use and how I cautiously may use this drug in men that I monitor very closely, because there is a rationale for this medicine. It's very powerful, but it can be very effective with a man. You only use it as a last resort. You don't cookie cut. You don't just put every man on testosterone, Anastrozole, Clomid, HCG, Tamoxifen. This is absolutely unethical and obviously, as you can see me right now, ridiculous and dangerous. It needs to stop. Number one, if you're going to use this medication, you have to make sure a man does not have heart disease. You have to take a very good history and physical exam. You have to assess him for classic risks for heart disease. Blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. Does he have heart disease? Check a coronary artery calcium score. Check his HDL. If this is a man, like many men, have inherently, organically low HDLs, and maybe he has a family history of early coronary disease in his dad, I do not use this medicine ever on that man. I can't. Number two, limited use of this medicine. With anabolic steroid users that are young, there is use of this drug as you're getting them off steroids in the recovery period. Anabolic recovery medicine, when you're using medicines ethically, like human chorionic gonadotropin that could classically increase the conversion aromatization of the endogenous androgen to estrogen, and he's going to suffer. So you use this carefully monitored and selective vestige and receptor modulators that I'll do videos on in the future. And of course, when you're using testosterone esters with men to rescue them and to recover them you, off anabolic steroids, this medicine can be classically used, again, monitored closely. It's a limited use motif. It has to be limited. If you're using it with TRT, I like to monitor and adjust other things first. For an example, if a man is on testosterone, you could microdose. It really works. I've learned this from my patients over years that have had heart attacks. They're on low doses of androgen because they have to, because they have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism, and they're not going to produce endogenous testosterone. So we have to use some testosterone for this man. He's going to suffer. So he is an aromatizing 
person, uh, maybe very sensitive to it, to the esters, so we use the lowest possible dose. Microdosing can really work. Very, very careful with this. So, also, look what else you're looking at. If you're looking at gynecomastia or weight issues or CNS, depression, really do a good history. Doctors and patients re rely on that. Use weight loss, dietary changes. And for gynecomastia, for crying out loud, use surgery. Just don't rely on this medicine forever. Go to a good plastic surgeon. And I do use tamoxifen for short periods of time to reset a man that's on TRT, he's having some sensitivity in gynecomastia, it's important we could use tamoxifen. It may be better, but there's no data for this. And you have to be careful for the side effects of that. I'll do a video on that. So that's my take on anastrozole, which is an incredibly powerful life-saving medicine for breast cancer. It can be used cautiously with close monitoring for men to improve their quality of life when they're on estrogenic compounds like testosterone esters. But you need to be monitored very carefully and you need to be doing this with the proper man and physician. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Thank you.